Did you check the key ball? My girlfriend's question tells you everything you need to know about how often I lose things. Yes, obviously I check the key bowl. The lie of my response tells you how confidently wrong I always am. In this instance, the keys were indeed in the key bowl. Found them. I tried to speak in a tone that didn't make it immediately obvious how stupid I was. Where were they? I had two options. Tell her where I found them, and let her hold this victory over me, or be more subtle about it and keep my pride. I chose the former. I'm not a liar. Other than earlier on, when I lied about checking the key bowl, that was different. She giggled. I'm not even looking for them, and I find them better than you do. She was right. I constantly misplace things. Sometimes they're found. But, quite often, I never see them again. Lost into the void. As I'd always say, she had a much more rational belief. That I'm just a bit of an idiot at times. It made more sense than the idea that something was out there to get me. Out to cause me an inconvenience. Of course, I never actually believed that my missing items were a result of anything other than my own ignorance. It was just a fun and somewhat comforting idea. That it somehow wasn't my fault. Sometimes, I still wonder if it's my fault that she disappeared. Last year, my girlfriend went missing. We went to bed together. And in the morning, the bed was unbearably empty. The lack of her presence became immediately obvious to me. The blanket lay undisturbed, with her phone still on the side. I headed to the bathroom, the only logical place for her to be, to find nothing. The lights in the house, all off, suggesting that nobody was here except me. Babe? I yelled, the only response being silence. I remember the exact moment that a pit seemed to form in my stomach as I tried to cling on to rational thoughts. Maybe she was just outside, taking out trash. Or maybe she had to go to the shops, simply for getting her phone at home. This could all be a funny story in a few minutes' time. Rational thoughts aren't always correct as comforting as that would be. She had vanished. There's no two ways around it. She was gone. The weeks after that were long and difficult. It hasn't gotten any easier. Sometimes I wonder what I missed when I was asleep. Was she taken? Did she hold a secret hatred to me, and left silently, leaving her life behind? Could I have stopped whatever happened if I was just awake? Her birthday was last week. I think about her every morning. Every single morning. I wake up to the same cold, empty bed that I did last year. But on this particular morning, the thoughts of her clung to me stronger than usual. The intense feeling of needing her by my side boiled up into a complex mix of emotions. 
For the longest time, I didn't want to open my eyes. For just a little longer, I wanted to pretend she was there, next to me. Eventually, I began the same routine I do every day. I open my eyes, turn to the empty space next to me, and reach out to confirm that it's real. But instead, I was interrupted. Not by a sound or a person, but an object. One that didn't exist the night prior, as I climbed into bed and struggled to fall asleep. At first, the unfamiliarity caused confusion. If you're not expecting to see a vending machine in your bedroom, you don't see a vending machine in your bedroom. For a moment, you just see a large box, an out-of-place shape in your room of comfort. It takes a moment for your mind to collect together the context. The white glowing buttons along the right-hand side, the wide metallic collection door at the bottom, the gentle hum of electronics inside. This rectangle suddenly became something tangible, something I understood to exist. There was a vending machine in my bedroom. I stood up slowly, trying to explain this away in my head. I knew I wasn't dreaming. My girlfriend is always with me in my dreams. So how had this gotten here, without me hearing it? Who had broken in to leave this? It would have hardly even fit through the door, at least not without a lot of noise. The machine itself was matte black all over. A few dozen blank buttons sat on the right. No glass allowed my gaze inside, and no branding allowed my mind any understanding of the contents. In place of the glass, taking up any space on the front that lacked buttons, words were printed in a white modern font. Lost? and found. I don't know why, but I spoke aloud for a moment. I miss you. As if this machine were a conduit to her, but do you really blame me? It had appeared just as mysteriously as she had gone. On her birthday, of all days, too, my mind connected the two thinking for just a moment that perhaps she had left this for me. I stepped towards the appliance, taking it all in. It stood just a little taller than me. I reached out, feeling its smooth, cold surface. My fingers found their way over the lettering, as a small bump told me they were slightly recessed. Eventually, my hand lay over the buttons. Without too much thought, I pressed a button. The light of it dimmed, whilst the others still remained active. A whirring from within the machine told me that if I waited, something would dispense. As the sound stopped, a clink from below suggested it was complete. I reached into the collection area and pulled out a small, silver, analog watch. It took a moment for my thoughts to catch up. I had lost this same watch years ago, on holiday. It was a gift from my brother, who wasn't particularly happy with me for losing it. Whilst the inexplicable, unexplainable nature of this bothered me, I was happy to be holding it again. For the first time in a year, I found myself genuinely smiling. Curiously, I pressed another button. Now, two were dim, with maybe forty or so still active. The whirring sounded the same, 
yet the clink had become a thump. Reaching in, I took out my childhood diary. I had lost it when I was seven. I was slightly surprised I even still recognized it. However, I was more surprised at the pristine condition. Turning through the pages, reading some of the entries, some of them even still had eraser shavings where I had taken out mistakes. It was as if it hadn't aged even a day. The third button gave me my old wallet. The next gave me a teddy I don't even remember holding, but recognized from my baby photos. Somewhere along the line, all the money I had ever lost spilt out onto the floor. I even got back a phone I had lost, somehow not smashing as it fell down through the machine. With another press, it dispensed her necklace. I stood there, holding it in a beautiful moment, holding something of hers, something she loved, for the first time in a year. Right there, I felt more connected to her than ever before. I held it tight as I took a short time to look around. Everything I had ever lost was with me again. I just wished she could have been there to witness this. But perhaps she was somehow responsible. It brought me comfort to imagine that somehow, from wherever she may be, she's still helping me find things. Irrational as it may have been, it's a nice thought. Rational thoughts aren't always correct, but neither are irrational ones. With another press, the machine came to life for the final time. As the last button dimmed away, it seemed to whir for longer than usual. I took a moment to reflect on the necklace again. She had been wearing it the night she disappeared. I wasn't sure anymore if that made it more special or more eerie. Should that have brought me comfort or have been a warning? Something dropped into the collection area. Yet the machine continued to whir. Another drop and another and another. It didn't sound consistent. Some thumped while others did not. I waited for the sounds to subside before reaching in. Once I finally did get to put my hand inside, it felt wet. I don't remember whether I pulled out her finger or her ear first. I just remember that her finger still wore her favorite ring. It's all a blur. My hand, covered in blood. I opened the collection door slightly wider to peer inside. A collection of flesh, bones, and skin. Some mangled together. Some kept pristine. There's no way I can prove all of it is even her. Most of it. A mess unrecognizable as ever being a living, breathing person. I screamed as I mashed the buttons again. A rational person wouldn't have done this, but I was not a rational person. Did I expect these actions to be undone? The deafening silence seemed to fill the room. The machine was unresponsive. I fell back onto the bed soaking the sheets with blood. With the ring and the necklace I had previously clutched, the situation lacked the magic it had held moments prior. The horror seeped in. 
as I looked around for anything to offer solace. The lost items on the floor, now covered in blood, served only as a reminder that I was forbidden from my happy ending. The ring, still attached to the finger, burned into my mind. Was this a message? A warning? Was there any explanation at all? My gaze met with a photo, framed by the side of my bed. It was of us, full of life. We took it on the day of her last birthday, oblivious to what was to come. She wore the same necklace and ring. We were happy. How much I wished to go back to a simpler time. Rational thoughts aren't always correct, but neither are irrational ones. Only the truth remains constant, even when unexplainable and rarely comforting.